The Lions Club Jubilee returned to downtown Agoria with rides, games, and fun for the whole family, concluding with a spectacular fireworks show over the lake. Residents had no shortage of live music events to enjoy with concerts taking place throughout the community, including the Tommy Stock Music Festival at Camp Agawam. Lake Orient's biggest party of the year, Dragon in the Lake, returned with art and activities in the downtown area and dragon boat races on the lake. And the Lake Orient community mourned along with our Oxford neighbors after the lives of four students were taken during the tragic shooting at Oxford High School. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. We'll have those stories and more that help shape the Lake Orion community in 2021. Stay tuned for this special edition of ONTV 2021, The Year in Review. Twenty twenty one was a challenging year for many, with the COVID pandemic continuing to dominate headlines in its second year. The Lake Orion community did its best to get back to some sense of normalcy, however, bringing back many events that were canceled in 2020. Unfortunately, 2021 started off on a sad note when beloved Lake Orion businessman Anthony Reard passed away suddenly at the age of 43 on January 23rd. Anthony owned M&B Graphics in downtown Lake Orion, a business started 25 years ago by his father, Robert. In 2019, Anthony was named Business Person of the Year by the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce. Hi, uh, my name is Anthony from uh, M&B Graphics and InkToAnything.com. Um, wanted to uh, just kind of give you guys a little bit about uh, what we do here. Uh, we're a full service print company. We specialize in garment printing, uh, wide format printing, uh, sign printing, just about any type of printing you're looking for uh, from plastic signs um, to metal signs, uh, any type of garment you're looking for from uh, embroidered hoodies to uh, printed t-shirts, um, you know, whatever you need. On Saturday, January 30th, family and friends came together in Children's Park, just a stone's throw from M&B Graphics, the business Anthony owned in downtown Lake Orion. Family friend Matt Pfeiffer welcomed those who came out on a cold winter evening to celebrate Anthony's life. You know, this is a sad time. And we all we all know that. And we feel that. But we have to remember that that uh, if if you knew Anthony, Anthony wouldn't want us here crying. He wouldn't want us here, you know, being all down. And and uh, he would want us here celebrating and and um, and uh, lifting up his family. And that that's what today is all about: is to lift up the beautiful reared family. Um, so thank you to everybody for coming out and for everybody who's helped. The ongoing COVID pandemic forced Owen TV to rethink their annual food drive, benefiting the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry. Instead of trying to collect food on a single day, their efforts were stretched out over the span of a week. Kicking off on Monday, February 1st, the food drive went live from 7 to 9 p.m. every day of the week. Viewers were encouraged to donate to the cause by visiting OrionOwenTV.org and clicking on the donate button on the home page. The community was also encouraged to fill the Owen TV van which was parked outside of the studio at the Orion Center. On Friday, ONTV passed its goal of $5,000, thanks to Matt Pfeiffer of Northern Wholesale Flooring, who streamed live on Facebook to solicit donations. Five grand, five grand. You guys rock. And you know, I, I woke up this morning, I, I, I've been involved with you guys on this uh, for years, and um, we are a sponsor of it, which we're proud to be, but I woke up and I was kind of bummed that normally I'm dropping off a truckload of food, um, or a, a, you know, an SUV, not like a, a, a semi. Not a semi. <laughs> and, um, and I didn't have that when I woke up this morning. I knew it was your last day. I knew you guys were short of the goal. And um, uh, for whatever reason, sometimes people tune into these ridiculous live videos I do on Facebook. So I thought, hey, maybe uh, maybe we can help and, and fill that void and uh, get you guys there. And um, yeah, we did. Again, thanks to our community. Nothing to do with me. Um, yeah, I kicked in a little bit too, but uh, um, we just have a great community. We're, we're blessed to live in a great place with great people. Usually we have a six-hour telethon, which technically would be tomorrow, the 6th of February, but we can't have it due to, uh, you know, the COVID restrictions. But having the five-day uh, telethon go all day, almost 24 hours a day for five days, um, it's been a unique experience. And I'm sure the staff and uh, you and everybody else uh, 
you know, we went through something interesting and new. And so uh, today, Matt Pfeiffer from Northern Flooring and Wholesale came in and said, hey, we're going to push you guys over the top. And um, he did. Uh, he, he broadcast live on Facebook right here and in about 45 minutes pushed us to our $5,000 goal. On Thursday, February 4th, the Lake Orion Downtown Development Authority kicked off Social District Nights in downtown Lake Orion. DDA Director Molly Lalone explains. Social District Nights is one of our new campaigns. We want to educate the public about what a social district is, and we also want to invite everybody down to enjoy it in downtown Lake Orion. The social district is a little bit like having New Orleans in downtown LO. Uh, you can go to one of our um, restaurants that has a social district permit that's fork and pint. 313 Pizza Bar, Went Social, and American Legion, Post 233, down at the end. Um, all of those places, you can go in there, tell them that you want a social yeah. district drink. They give yeah. you a cup. It has um, Lake Orion on it and the name of their restaurant, and you get to walk out and stroll the streets enjoying your drink. Each week, visitors were treated to ice sculptures displayed throughout the downtown area, as well as live ice carving demonstrations by Clint Rich of Clear Cut Ice Sculptures. I was really excited when they told me they were going to do the event. Um, I like that they're doing it every week because a lot of times cities like this, they just do it one big weekend and it's over. But this is throughout the whole month of February, so I thought that was pretty cool. Thursday, February 25th was the ladies' night with many stores staying open late to offer discounts, specials, and incentives. A second warming station was set up on the south end of Broadway Street near the American Legion joining the existing warming station located at Flint and Anderson Street. On the morning of Saturday, February 6th, with temperatures in the mid-teens, 80 golfers formed 19 teens to take part in the Lake Orion Sunrise Rotary Club's 7th Annual Ice Golf Cup Challenge. Nine holes were set up in downtown Lake Orion, three in Greens Park, including one on the frozen surface of Lake Orion. Um, it's a really great way for us to engage um, and interact with um, our local business partners and, and community members and really help show what, the, what our community does, uh, what, our, what our organization does with our community, not just for it. The event concluded with an afterglow party and silent auction with drinks provided by Wine Social and box lunches courtesy of Johnny Black's Lake House. The Ice Golf Cup Challenge is the Rotary Club's largest fundraiser of the year, along with their seafood boil in the summer. On Wednesday, March 10th, a solemn ceremony was held at Waterford Oaks County Park to commemorate the one-year anniversary of the first confirmed case of COVID-19 in Michigan. Oakland County Executive Dave Coulter welcomed guests and the media in attendance. One year ago tonight uh, that we learned of the first case of coronavirus in Oakland County. Since then, uh, more than 16,000 county residents have contracted COVID and nearly 1,600 have passed of this disease. This isn't a celebration today of one uh, of a year anniversary. Uh, it's a remembrance of the 1,600 people in this county that we've lost, but it's also a remembrance that Together, we have gotten, th the rest of us have gotten through this and it's been tough, we need to heal. We've been through a trauma. And so we were trying to find the right balance. We looked at a lot of things that people across the country have done, but when we saw this technology and we thought about putting it in a park where you could walk and be with your own thoughts and, 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 and experience the lights and the nature and the, the wind and the, the stars, we thought, yeah, that, I, you know, that might just be the right mood for us, the right setting that we're trying to create where people can come and, and reflect what has really gone on this last year. On March 30th, the parking lot at the Orient Center was filled to capacity with cars taking part in Car Bingo. It was the second time Orient Township Parks and Rec hosted Car Bingo. The first took place in December. The turnout on this sunny spring day surpassed the previous event with over 170 residents responding. Thing that we found is very safe, very fun for all ages, and lets people get out of their house and have a good time for a couple hours. <laughs> Describe uh, the rules and what's happening here. So this is car bingo. They're playing 10 rounds. So they get two cards each sheet of paper, and um, if their number is called, they get to mark it down, and once they get the bingo, they get, uh, get a prize. The event was sponsored by Tim Hortons on Lapeer Road, who donated gift certificates for coffee and donuts to hand out to winners. The top prize was a $100 gift card. 
Calling out the bingo numbers were Orion Township Supervisor Chris Burnett and Oakland County Sheriff Mike Bouchard. On Saturday, April 24th, more than 100 volunteers fanned out across Orion Township to take part in the fifth annual Orion Green Up. Beginning at 9 a.m., volunteers checked in at Camp Agawam, where there were assigned areas within the township that needed a little sprucing up. A majority of them are uh, general debris cleanup and trash removal along roadsides, trails. Um, other projects could either be uh, planting trees in parks or um, uh, other beautification projects. We're told the turnout was the best ever in the five years this program has been taking place in the community. We have to assume it's due in part to residents eager to get out and enjoy some fresh air and sunshine while giving back to the community following a long and challenging year. On Tuesday, May 4th, dignitaries representing Orion Township and Oakland County gathered on Baldwin Road just south of Maybe Road to celebrate the official completion of the Baldwin Road widening project. The $55 million project widened Baldwin Road from Morgan to Walden and includes five new roundabouts. This has been a labor of love. That's the best way to describe this project. And uh, we're, I'm extremely grateful for the team that's here and to finally be here today celebrating with all of you. Um, we really wanted to create something that would last a long time. And this is not, this is not about me, this is about everyone here. So I just want to say uh, we made it. Thank you. Following the speeches, caution tape was stretched out across the sidewalk as the widening project officially came to an end with the ribbon cutting ceremony. Two, three, <laughs> Just a few minutes later, township representatives traveled south in Baldwin to Jordan Road to officially dedicate the Playful Dragon Playscape project. Made possible thanks to a grant and the collaboration of several parties, the Dragon greets travelers who are heading north into Orion Township on Baldwin Road. Yeah, ready? <laughs> so this property was purchased by the Road Commission as the right-of-way acquisition because the building that was on this property was close to the road, actually where the road was going to go through. So they had to purchase the property to build the road. They used it for staging of equipment and materials during the first phase, and then we knew that this was going to be excess property, so I reached out to the Road Commission and said, hey, what are your plans with this? We would, the township would like to acquire it. So we worked with them back and forth for a while, and ultimately we were able to negotiate the price of $1 for this property, uh, and, and here we are. On the morning of Wednesday, May 12th, Orion Township Supervisor Chris Barnett hosted his annual State of the Township Address at Woodside Bible Church on the grounds of Canterbury Village. The theme of this year's presentation was Building Together as One, and the supervisor recapped the past year, including the ongoing construction of the new Township Hall, the completion of Baldwin Road, and its five roundabouts. And of course, the impact the pandemic has had on the area's businesses and residents. So uh, just some of the things we did that were really uh, impactful to our residents uh, we, we were heavily involved in social media. We created uh, meetups for neighbors, people to get together. We had a community pantry that had wild success. We started the Forgotten Food Harvest Truck. Every Monday our residents get free food uh, right here at the Woodside Church Campus. It started at our township campus and we've moved across the street. Uh, and we want to thank the partners at Woodside for their amazing support of that program. <laughs> Thursday, May 20th, Canterbury Village hosted its first day of Dino Stroll, a family-friendly event that featured 75 life-size animatronic dinosaurs scattered across 21 acres. Orion Township was the first stop on a 40-city tour. Our Dinosaur Stroll will be one of our um, uh, marquee stroll events for the year. We'll do Dinosaur Stroll, we'll do a medieval stroll, and then a Halloween and holiday stroll. So those will be our big four strolls this year. And then obviously it looks like with the CDC and, and everything coming along, it looks like we're going to be able to do our food festivals that got very well known in 2019. So since I bought Canterbury from my father uh, last year, we really had our work cut out for us and it's been a lot of fun and my team's doing a great job. The Dino Stroll kicked off on May 20th and returned over Memorial Day weekend. Tickets were purchased in advance and groups of visitors were admitted every half hour. An estimated 15,000 people visited over seven total days in May. 
On Friday, May 21st, the streets of downtown Agorian were closed to traffic as approximately 100 vendors set up shop for the two-day flower and art fair. Normally hosted by the Lake Orion Downtown Development Authority, the DDA partnered up with the Orion Art Center to bring in 360 event productions who helped organize this year's fair. This is our first big event in over a year that has been taking over the downtown. It's been a while and we're so happy to have it happen right now. Started in 2001, the event was canceled in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. With the easing of restrictions across the state, the event returned to downtown Lagorian with dozens of vendors selling flowers, art, and home improvement items. There were crafts, food, a petting zoo, and live music in the beer garden located at Anderson and Front Street. Partnership between the Art Center and the DDA has been ongoing for many years. We've been in conversation, so we hold Dragon on the Lake Festival in August every year, and it was a natural fit that we participate with them in this type of event. We have a lot of experience. There's a lot of synergy. We know everything about holding an event like this, and so through discussions earlier this year, heading into what's another difficult environment to hold an outdoor event like this, we decided it was time to partner up and kind of begin that transition for the flower and art fair. It is also an art fair, so we were bringing the art to the flowers as well. That's been fun with the addition of music, and it's another art form for us. So all of it was really important for us to partner together, and it just kind of happened organically through conversations. On the morning of Monday, May 31st, runners and walkers of all ages arrived in downtown Lake Gorion for the start of Orion Township's 5th Annual Orion Veterans Memorial Day 5K. It was cloudy and cool at the start of the race that helps fund the maintenance of the Orion Veterans Memorial. In its fifth year, a new five-mile course was added to the traditional 5K path that took runners out onto the Paint Creek Trail then back to the finish line on Anderson Street. Last year, organizers were forced to go completely virtual due to the pandemic, but with the easing of restrictions, participants returned in record numbers. Orion Township once again teamed up with Hanson's Running Shop to make the event possible. I'm just excited to see everybody cross the finish line. We're Right now we're over 300 participants and we still have some people registering today, so this is our biggest year yet and we are very excited. I couldn't believe it. Uh, I think this is a sign of things to come. You know, people were just so tired of being cooped up and not able to go out. And, uh, you know, it's an amazing community that supports these events. So uh, it's what we expect from the Lake Orient area because they really do support uh, whatever is going on. Um, so I was I was surprised, but not surprised. So, so obviously we, we planned this event last year and we, we still held the event. It just was a fully virtual event so people got to run and, and just kind of set in their times. Obviously not as exciting as running with a large group as we just saw leave here. Uh, so, so to be back um, and really kind of just as things are really reopening uh, is really exciting. I think that's also one of the reasons why we have such great participation. So um, we had so many people when they were signing up just saying, you know, thank you so much for, for hosting it again and for doing this again. So there's a lot of excitement and we're, we're, we're glad that we can just kind of be part of like people getting back to normal. Bill McLaughlin was one of several active duty runners who took part in the race. The Air Force recruiter finished third on the five mile course. Good to be able, especially on a day like today, a Memorial Day, to come out, represent my service, represent uh, my brothers and sisters in arms who I've served with, and, uh, and then, of course, just get out and have some fun racing. I'm standing here at the finish line of the Orion Veterans Memorial Day run as the last participants are just finishing up behind me right now. This is a record turnout for the race this year, and everyone is just so happy to be a part of it again after taking a year off. In Lake Orion, I'm Lauren Creighton for ONCV News. On the afternoon of Monday, May 31st, the Orion Veterans Memorial was once again a gathering place for the community on Memorial Day. Board Chairman Dr. Joseph Master Mateo welcomed those in attendance and introduced keynote speaker Vito Pamela. As I stand here today as a proud American, my heart swells. I was proud to serve my country and I continue to serve my country. And the oath I took so long ago still stands today. 
Lake Orion Police Chief Harold Rossman introduced 2021's Veteran of the Year. Bob Watros served in the U.S. Navy from 1955 to 1958 under President Eisenhower. Over the past two decades, Bob has been the Orion Veterans Memorial Park Manager and Caretaker, helping to make the memorial one of the most beautiful in the state. It means a lot because sometimes you don't get the thanks and everybody does appreciate what we're doing here that show today. A lot of people don't stop here, but they notice when they drive down the road and they know we take care of it and we care. You know? And that's what we do here. There's 1,800 bricks here. Everyone's got a story. Uh, and every one of these guys were young when they were in the service. People forget about they see all these old men. That's not the guys that were in the service. It's the younger guys. Uh, and that's what I try to remember. And I listen to all their stories. Uh, and I think if it's important to them to tell it to me, I will listen to it. On Thursday, June 3rd, Orion Township Supervisor Chris Barnett met with a group of volunteers from Cunningham Lemp to begin building the new concession stand at Miracleville located at Friendship Park. After its opening in August of 2019, construction on the concession stand was supposed to follow. However, due to the pandemic, it was delayed. But thanks to the generosity of the public, the plan is finally back in motion. Awesomeness is happening behind me right now. So we have an amazing group of volunteers from uh, Cunningham Limp and some township employees. And we're building the concession stand out here at the Miracle League field. So uh, it won't only just be a concession stand, it'll be bathrooms, handicap accessible bathrooms, uh, some storage for some equipment for the league. Uh, and we're really excited about it. And we've been raising money for this for a long time. Uh, the field we're on, you know, we raised almost half a million dollars to build this field. And this is kind of the final part of the dream out here is to build this concession stand. We have an amazing partnership with Easter Seals Michigan. So um, they're a great partner, uh, local nonprofit, actually they're a statewide nonprofit. Uh, that serve adults and young people with special needs. And uh, we literally had hundreds of community members donate uh, to the field to make this happen. So uh, it's a really cool thing. I mean, mo pretty much everything here has been donated. Uh, very, very, uh, with very small contribution from the township, but uh, most of this has been just the community coming together and supporting this dream and this vision that we've had here. On the evening of Thursday, June 24th, Orion Township held their annual Summer Sizzle event at the Orion Center. Originating in 2009, Summer Sizzle has grown into an annual event for the community to look forward to. This year's guests were able to enjoy carnival games, hot candy, snow cones, hot dogs and chips, bounce houses, live music from Guy Lewis and the Chautauqua Express, and more. So this event started a handful of years ago with our supervisor, Matthew Gibb. Um, we wanted to do a give back to the community because we were in a really tight, bad time back in 2007-2008. And this was our come back out and let's be Orient Township, let's be strong. So that's how it started and it's gotten bigger and better every year. This event kind of grew very quickly and it kind of grew out of our budget bounds. Um, and this was before the millage, so this was in a different time frame. And First Baptist Church was so committed to this program that they actually stepped up and volunteered to help us with some of the expenses and they still do that to this day. For probably the last 16, 17 years, um, whether it was Summer Sizzle or some of the other Orion Township Parks and Rec events, um, we've had a relationship with uh, Township where our teenagers have helped run some of the kids' games or just been general volunteers. And then as the events themselves have shifted and morphed into either different locations or different styles, we've stayed with it. And I think about probably five or six years ago, this event, Summer Sizzle, used to be run out at Civic Center Park, and the township used to do most of it. Our kids would just do the games. So then we partnered up, and we have started providing all of the food stuff and manning all of that, as well as the kids helping with the kids' game, the teenagers. And so we do the snow cone, cotton candy, popcorn, hot dogs, chips and just try to do what we can to be a blessing to the community. The event was made possible thanks to the generosity of many community sponsors. After its cancellation in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, I asked Jennifer Vesna how it felt to have the popular event return to the Orient Center. Yeah, we obviously canceled it last year. The event did not happen. We just could not see this kind of event happening in that atmosphere. So planning it this year, we really saw one of two things happening. 
either nobody was going to come because people were still reluctant to come out or everybody was going to come out because they're ready to be out and it really looks like people are ready to be out because here we are on an evening that does not look very nice it's humid it's sticky the sky is not wonderful and here we are with hundreds of people from our community. It's not officially summertime here in Lake Orion until the Lions Club Jubilee begins. I'm standing downtown in Lake Orion right now where the annual event kicked off today. And let me tell you, everyone around me is really enjoying the festivities. The Lions Club Jubilee has been a tradition here in Lake Orion since 1976. The event moved to Canterbury Village in 2009 due to construction before returning to downtown Lake Orion in 2014. Lions Club President Mike Pekelis was very pleased with the large turnout on just day one. After all, the Jubilee is incredibly important to his organization. This is one of our biggest single fundraisers that we put on all year long. Uh, I think a lot of people know what the Lions do for the community with eyeglasses, uh, scholarships for kids, hearing aids, there's all kinds of things that the Lions do and this is a big part of the fundraising that gives us the funds to do that. This is one of uh, many uh, getting back to normal um, events and milestones that we have. Um, we're very glad that Lions Club Jubilee has decided to come back to downtown. It is nice to see all of these people um, coming out here to have a good time. The Jubilee's grand return was welcomed by an abundance of rides, carnival games, and more courtesy of Skirbic Entertainment Group. One of the new activities this year included a cornhole competition on Thursday. Next year we're planning on bringing Beer Tent back. I know everybody's uh, wondering about that. We couldn't do it this year because of the restrictions at the time. We start planning in January. But we got the carnival, we got a great fireworks show Saturday night. We've got a lot of things going on Friday and Saturday night. We've got our Project Kids site for eye screening for kids. We've got a vaccine uh, pop-up booth. We've got leader dog collections. We've got the VFW is selling water. So we've got a lot of things. We've got the high school robotics team coming out Saturday afternoon. So there's a lot to do down here. The highlight of the weekend was a fireworks show over Lake Orion, courtesy of Ace Pyro. The show was almost postponed due to rain, but the forecast improved and the show continued with only a slight delay. It ran approximately 20 minutes and ended with a spectacular finale. Jubilee, a reunion for Lake Orion community members. It's a celebration of life returning back to normal once again. Sitting at the top of the Ferris wheel for Owen TV News, I'm Lauren Creighton. On the evening of Thursday, July 15th, library staff, former staff and board members gathered in the meeting room to dedicate the room to former library director Linda Sickles. Current director Karen Knox welcomed those in attendance and unveiled a plaque that had been mounted on the wall. some very big shoes is what I remember most. Uh, I got to spend a day or two with her before she completely left the building and she did kind of this giant brain dump and I remember scribbling furiously in a notebook all the things that I was trying to remember that she was trying to teach me. Um, she did some phenomenal things here and I just felt very honored to try to pick up where she left off and continue moving forward. Linda Sickles was hired as a library director in 1980. She retired in January of 2011 after 31 years of service. Sadly, she passed away in December of 2019. July 15th is National Pet Fire Safety Day. On that day, ADT Security Services hosted a press conference at a home on King Circle in Lake Orion. Representatives of ADT, as well as firefighters and dignitaries, were present to look back at an incident that could have been catastrophic. On May 27th, while the Vena family was out of the house, 
their golden retriever, Finn, tried to reach some food that was on the counter near the stove. Finn somehow managed to turn on the burner, which started a fire. Smoke set off multiple detectors, which alerted ADT's monitoring center. A dispatcher contacted 911, and the Orion Township Fire Department was quickly on the scene to extinguish the fire and save the pets in the home. The incident was captured on video. Well, I had cameras inside the house, and I was I was shocked to see that a dog uh, is big enough and can hit that button just the right way so that it puts the pressure in and turns it at the same time. I never never heard of something like that, so I was just as shocked as everybody else to see that a dog could actually start a fire. Fire Marshal Jeff Williams said these type of incidents happen more often than you might think and offered some advice to prevent it from happening in your home. Well, I think the number one thing to do is is make sure that you don't store any items on the stove. Obviously, if you do have pets at home and you don't have anything on the stove and they do happen to turn it on on an accident, uh, that will stop the, the, the fact that it, something could catch on fire. On Saturday, July 24th, more than 1,000 Oakland County residents descended on Kensington Church on M24 for a no-has collection event. It was one of several events planned throughout the year by Oakland County and the first time it's ever been held at Kensington. Attendees were encouraged to drop off household hazardous waste such as paint and cleaners, as well as electronics, batteries, and fluorescent lights. The event is free for Lake Orion residents. The main goal is to eliminate uh, direct landfill for any of these household hazardous chemicals, right? Because homeowners, you can pretty much throw your stuff away. So when we offer these programs, we're able to redirect that so it doesn't end up going direct landfill. A lot of it does get recycled. On Friday, July 30th, Tommy Stott kicked off at the Fire Bowl at Camp Agawam and continued throughout the weekend. The music festival began in 2015 as a fundraiser to allow the friends of Camp Agawam to make improvements to the amphitheater. A lot of the people who grew up here on Tommy's Lake, uh, we'd get together and, and play music and buy a campfire. And in 2015, when the, uh, when the township bought this beautiful piece of property and we found out that it was available to be rented, uh, we said, hey, why not try to have Tommy stock over, over there instead of over in, in our friend's yard? And, and it, was, it was honestly born from that and, and has grown into the, the nonprofit that uh, raises money to give back to this, to this beautiful camp to do restorations like this uh, beautiful uh, new, new stone steps and the, the mezzanine that, that we built. So we've come a long way since our first one in 2015 for sure. Things kicked off on Friday night with the band No Money Down. They were the first of approximately 20 bands that performed throughout the weekend in the intimate setting. Musicians also performed at the Tiki Bar located near the shore of Tommy Lake. So all the proceeds from, from this event, all, our, all the uh, money we raise at the beer tent, the Tiki Bar, um, for ticket sales, all, all is going to come back to improvements down here. We want to, uh, we want to make a more permanent stage, get a, a permanent covering for the stage so we're not putting a tent over it. Uh, we, want, we need to upgrade the power, permanent lighting, concession stands. So we've got a lot of, a lot of projects to do out here. So we're just going to continue to raise money, have fun in the process, and, and continue to build this place up. The weekend wrapped up on Sunday, August 1st when Camp Agawam turned into a sea of pink for the afternoon. The Real Men of Orion hosted their second annual Boobs, Tubes and Dudes fundraiser supporting breast cancer awareness. Lake Orion residents were invited out to Camp Agawam for food, drinks and live music. So the Real Men of Orion is a, um, it became or grew out of Real Men Wear Pink of Oakland County, which is five years running in Oakland County. And um, so all the money that we raise through the Real Men of Orion for this event and for all of our events goes to the American Cancer Society uh, and it goes to the Making Strides Division. So basically their mission is to help people who are fighting breast cancer with um, lodging, food, therapy, um, counseling, whatever they need to help make the burden a little less as they're going through this traumatic uh, traumatic experience. On Saturday, July 31st, over 160 classic cars and hot rods line the streets of downtown Lake Orion for the seventh annual Kids and Cops Charity Cruise. Families had an absolutely perfect day to stroll along Flint and Broadway to see the cars on display and to hear oldies courtesy of Rockin' Ronnie. 
Each year, the event raises funds for the Lake Orion Police Department's Kids and Cops program at Blant Sims Elementary School and the department's Shop with a Hero program held just before Christmas. The biggest thing is the, is the community. Everybody's been cooped up for the last year, not knowing what to do, not seeing each other, not interacting with other every, everybody. It's nice to see the community come out and support a group that, you know, we do stuff and give back to the community. And I'll tell you, law enforcement, what we do has gotten a little tough in the last year, year and a half, but it's nice to come out and see the support and everything that we have going on. And it's just nice to have the community completely supportive of what we do. On Friday nights, parents can drop off their children. They stay with us. We play uh, basketball with them, um, tug of war, floor hockey. Um, we have dinner with them. Just an opportunity for the children to interact with us and see us in a different uh, light versus just being in uniform. The event was organized by Gowling Buick GMC, who holds several charity car cruises throughout the season. There was no pancake breakfast this year, but a 50-50 raffle along with donations netted approximately $4,000 at this year's event. No, no challenges. We just decided that we were going to park the cars the way we did last year. It seemed to be a little bit easier. It's a little bit more protection for the people, um, so we're trying to do it that way. It makes it a little easier if the fire department has to get through, then we're, we're all set there too. So yeah. So what types of things are going on here today? Was there no pancake breakfast? Today? No pancake breakfast this year. It was uh, manpower issues with everybody, as we all know. Um, we do have a 50-50 going today. We have our guest star guest, Elmo. Um, and we also have uh, just the stuff itself. 100 trophies were given out this year. Uh, dash plaques were given out. Uh, so it's, it's a great day. The weather is perfect for this. Nice breeze, cloud, partly cloudy. I, we couldn't ask for anything better. We're really happy from Gowling Buick GMC to be able to do this for the, these guys. Thank you so much um, for all the effort you put in to make this a special day for all of us. And again, like I said, I can't say nothing but thank you at the bottom of our hearts. And the kids thank you too. <laughs> On Friday, August 6th, families paid absolutely nothing as they gathered at Friendship Park for the 17th year of the Big Rig gig to see a variety of trucks, tractors, and emergency vehicles from all around Oakland County. Throughout the evening, the parking lot cycled through a total of 1,190 cars, carrying about 4,000 people. What this is is just the opportunity for families to come out. Um, and enjoy being outdoors and get the rare opportunity to get up close and personal with the big rigs that the kids only get to dream about seeing. We have everything here, um, cement trucks, um, the police department's here with their vehicles, the road commission is here in force with like eight different vehicles, they've got road graders. The obviously the sheriff's department is here with the helicopter and the bear. Um, a little bit of everything is here, big, small, everything in between. On Saturday, August 7th, families were invited to take part in the library's summer reading finale. Dozens of children and parents enjoyed fun activities, games and crafts on the grounds behind the library. Well, today's our summer reading finale and it looks a little different still. Uh, we're still dealing with some COVID stuff, but uh, we are all outside in the backyard of the library having a little bit of a game party today. So we've got some music playing, we've got some crafts, we've got uh, a rock wall from Oakland County Parks is here. Uh, and we've got all sorts of games out for kids to play. And at noon, we're gonna be drawing our raffle prize winners from the summer reading program. Organizers were determined to make the program more hands-on this year as opposed to last year when it was done entirely online. So we've had just a lot of different fun activities for kids to do, for actually kids and teens and adults for summer reading. Um, and so the, for kids, they had a little passport that they got to get stamps and stickers for doing different activities in regards to reading and literacy and checking out things around town. Um, and so if they completed all those activities, they get a, a drawing into the raffle the, of their choice for whatever prize they want. Um, and so we've just been doing a lot of activities like that. Teens had their own little bingo game that they were playing all summer as well, similar, uh, trying to win some prizes. We do like to encourage that really fun, reading for fun, reading for pleasure, and it's not always just reading for school and education. So, and by reading for fun and reading for pleasure, they are increasing their literacy skills. It was a bittersweet day for library staff. It was the last day on the job for director Karen Knox, who will be moving to St. Charles, Missouri to begin a new phase of her career. She will act as head of technology services for a chain of 12 library buildings near St. Louis. 
So, yeah, today is my last day as the director of the Orient Township Public Library. It has been an absolute honor to work here for the last nine and a half years and um, lead the staff through this wonderful um, set of services and changes and new technologies and space renovations and all the good stuff we've been able to do. And so um, I, I know they will continue to do wonderful things even though I'm leaving. On Saturday, August 7th, 74 jet skiers from all over the country came to Greens Park in Lake Orion to compete and brave the wave. Cash prizes were handed out in 14 different categories throughout the day, including racing and freestyle events. So today we have the best of the best in freestyle. We have some of the best racing, but literally when it comes to freestyle, the best in the world have shown up in Lake Orion, Michigan today. Uh, Ryan and I were just friends. He was a jet ski racer. I was not. I like event planning. And he said there wasn't anything like this that was happening in the state of Michigan. And I said, we're the Great Lakes State. Why isn't it happening here? And I said, let's do it. So um, we're thankful to the village of Lake Orion and Orion Township. And those guys sat and were willing to work with us to have this happen. So it's the backing of the people in the village, Lake Orion Police, and all the people that are local that um, helped this to occur. So Ryan and I just had a goal. And we can't believe we're already on year five. And it's grown um, exponentially every year. We still had our event during COVID. We were limited to the amount of people here, but it still happened. We didn't give up. And it's just great. Beautiful day, 82 and sunny in Lake Orion, Michigan. Can't ask for better. On Wednesday, August 25th, Lake Orion Community Schools Administration, board members, staff, and family members gathered at the entrance of the new Early Childhood Center to celebrate its official grand opening with a ribbon cutting ceremony. Are you ready? I have been dreaming about. It, is, it has been my passion in working in this field. And when I first came to Lake Orion, it's been now over 17 years that I've been here. And it's always been a dream of mine to bring this facility to this community. This is a really important day. Early childhood is the formation of, of all child experiences and, and education. And to have such a state of the art and, and wonderful facility, uh, second to none. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the difference in the years to come. The school district broke ground at the center in June of 2020, located on Jocelyn Road, just south of Clarkston Road. The facility can accommodate up to 230 students from birth to five years old, including general education and special education preschool students. So it is preschool, but it also is pre-K, which is even before preschool. So this is really going to be the child's first school experience in the Lake Orion Community School District before they get to kindergarten. So what types of things would a child experience here? Uh, anything from social emotional learning and education to gross motor, fine motor skills. We also have opportunities for kids to work together with their own families in our center and with uh, the adults that are teaching the programs. This project was made possible thanks to voters who approved a $160 million 10-year bond in November of 2018, which also allows the district to renovate other school buildings. I can say that I appreciate them and really am proud of this community for realizing that this is such an important piece of the educational process. Uh, early childhood is their first step, as I said before, of them coming to the school district and the community by voting in the bond uh, to create this facility is telling us this is important to them and their families here. So um, I, I, I'm over the moon thankful and I'm just so proud of that and being a part of this community. Quite simply, two words, thank you, all caps. Uh, absolutely amazing, uh, the work that's being done uh, and the work that's planned to be done. Uh, in a few years, the district will look completely refreshed. Uh, and this is just the first building that we're gonna open. Looking forward to Blanche Sims in a few years. Uh, and then all of the refreshes uh, that people are seeing as they drive by our beautiful facilities now. Dragon on the Lake 2021 officially opened to the public on Thursday, August 26th and continued through Sunday, August 29th. The streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed to traffic as dozens of vendors lined up along Broadway and Flint streets. Visitors were able to shop for art, jewelry, clothing and more while enjoying food, refreshments and entertainment. 
There were plenty of activities for the little ones, including arts and crafts, inflatables, and even a magic show. Artists also got to work on their entries for the Chalk Art Challenge, which has its roots in the very first Dragon on the Lake Festival. Participants were assigned a space along Front Street to create their works of art, which could be judged and considered for cash prizes. For the first time, the Orient Art Center partnered up with 360 Event Productions to organize the event, which is the Art Center's largest fundraiser of the year. You know, we are really, really excited and thankful that every, a lot of people from the community did come out to support the Orient Art Center. And you're right, things were very different this year. Uh, obviously, we're still battling COVID. Um, and we took last year off, so our rhythm might be a little off, but I have to say that the people that I talked to and the events I participated in were really exciting and we had a great time. The Art Center had a presence on Broadway Street where they offered demonstrations and promoted the classes they offered throughout the year. Oh, we hope that we let people know that we're here. There is an Art Center in Lake Orion. It's amazing the people that don't know that, so that's part of what we're doing here. Um, and we definitely need some financial help. Um, but we have a great pottery studio where people can come and go 24-7 and work. It's great to be involved in the community. That's what art is all about here. We're trying to bring the community some art and art to the community. So, yes, it's great to be back. Visitors enjoyed music and refreshments at the Tiki Bar on Anderson Street all weekend long, and live bands performed in the Dragon Pub as well. On Saturday, the always popular Square Pegs entertained the crowd with the biggest hits from the 80s. You know, I can't even tell you how good it feels. We took a little more than a year. It was more like 18 months for the Square Pegs, so to be back and to be doing what we love and, you know, to be back together is so special for us and we're so happy. You can expect a super high energy, fun 80s dance party. We got your favorite 80s hits. Pretty much run the gamut on your favorite 80s tunes and super high energy, like I said, you better be dancing all night. <laughs> you think this Lake Orion community needs this right now? I think every community needs this right now. I think live music is so healing and it brings us together in a way that other things just can't. On the morning of Sunday, August 29th, teams of paddlers gathered in Greens Park on the shore of Lake Orion for the return of the Dragon Boat Races. Participation was down in 2021, but eight teams set up camp in the park with the goal of claiming the coveted Dragon Cup trophy. The Tyco drummers performed during the opening ceremony at 9.30 a.m. Then organizers Rob Cavanaugh and Matt Gibb welcomed participants and went over the rules. By 9.45, the first boats were boarded and headed out to the started line. In the first race of the day, it was the Bay City Rowers in lane one, Heron Springs in lane two, and Dragon Down Parkinson's in lane three. With a time of 119.67, Team DDP claimed the first victory of the day. Um, we're Dragon Down Parkinson's. We use this festival every year as a way to raise funds and awareness for the Michigan Parkinson's community. Um, we race for our nonprofit, the Maryland Jane Foundation. So all the proceeds directly benefit Michigan residents. How do you guys feel? You just won the first heat. Adrenaline. We're loving this. This is what we look forward to. And anytime we can come out on top, we're happy. When the times were tabulated, it was announced that the Bernie Directive would attempt to defend their title against Team DDP and the Bay City Rowers in the third race of the final heat. Here's how it played out. And Bernie Directive is sound as always, a bit out of cadence, but man, they are strong. Yeah, and it uh, unofficially appears that they, they have commanded a lead, but nothing is over until it's over. It is not over until it's over. That truer words have never been spoken, but I got to tell you what, it yeah. sure looks like it's really over. Yeah, and unofficial and looks results, like, looks like Bernie directed It looks like we could have another, have another notch in the championship belt for the Bernie directive. Wow. Strength. Oh, yeah. Feeling the burn once again. Congratulations to the Bernie directive who won their third Dragon Boat race in a row and their fourth win in five attempts. It's a great win. Uh, it's, I'm sad that I didn't, there's not more boats, but you know what? Um, I get it. There's a lot of things going on in the world, but uh, congratulations to everybody that participated today, uh, especially my team and everyone that takes a lot of time to do this. A full day of dedication, 
Uh, but it's for a great cause. Love our community. Um, and this is just one more cool thing that we have in our community. But hey, I'm happy to take the trophy home. It stays in Lake Orion. Um, so we'll, we'll treat Edwin with uh, respect and honor. Dragon in the Lake 2021 came to a close on Sunday with an award ceremony at the Dragon Pub. There, the Orion Art Center named the winners of the Talk Art Challenge. Awards were also handed out to the best drummer of the Dragon Boat Races, as well as best costume, which went to the Bay City Rowers, and most team spirit, which went to Team Shark Attack. The bronze medal went to Team Dragon Down Parkinson's for finishing in third place. The silver medal went to the Bay City Rowers for second place, and claiming the gold and the coveted Dragon Cup trophy was the Bernie Directive. It is the Stanley Cup of Dragon Boat Racing. Orion Township's Fall Festival of Family Fun returned to Camp Agawam after a brief hiatus in 2020. Although the weather wasn't very cooperative, families still came out to enjoy carnival games, crafts, a petting zoo, music, and food. Local vendors and organizations got in on the fun, and families were able to take a hay wagon ride throughout Camp Agawam. Um, we kind of wanted to have an event that was free for the public, and in the fall time we have a uh, summer event called Summer Sizzle. So we want to kind of mimic that, but out at one of our parks that people aren't super familiar with, which is Camp Agawam. So this morning it was very rainy and sad, but the sun is out now and it's warm. And I think we will be having a great event with lots of people. They're, they're coming in one by one and it'll be a good turnout. On Friday, September 10th, the Lake Orion DDA hosted its first ever Oktoberfest event in the village and the turnout was tremendous. Visitors enjoyed a beer tent, food, live music, contests, and games for the whole family. There was also a costume contest, and an award was handed out to the best yodeler. I'm delighted. It is fantastic. Lake Orion, thank you so much for coming to our Oktoberfest party. Describe what's happening here today. Describe the environment and activities that have taken place. Well, definitely we have a beer tent going on, but we also have um, an eight-person live band. Um, they're doing a combination between pop hits uh, and Oktoberfest German uh, uh, traditional stuff. We've got uh, flick and chicken games, and um, we've we had a wiener race. This uh, dogs uh, this earlier today. We've had yodeling contests. We we did our very very best to make this a family friendly event that was also um, true to the tradition of Oktoberfest. On the evening of Saturday, September 11th, the Lake Orion community was invited to come out to the Orion Veterans Memorial to commemorate the 20th anniversary of 9/11. Police officers, firefighters, and other first responders gathered at the site where former Fire Chief Bob Smith welcomed visitors and introduced guests. Oakland County Circuit Court Judge Michael Warren spoke yeah, about the importance of teaching the history of 9-11 in our nation's schools. Most people in the world do not think like Osama bin Laden did, right? Most people in the world wish they lived in countries more like ours. Some people are so desperate to get to our country, they, they try to leave. And, and come into our country illegally, right? We've heard about the border crisis. Some people just want to change their country to be more like ours, and some people hate us so much, they want to kill us, and that's Osama bin Laden. And it's because of those founding first principles in the Declaration of Independence, the rule of law, unalienable rights, limited government, the social compact, equality, and the right to alter, abolish, and oppressive government. That's what makes America, America. Keynote speaker Art Schraw recounted his experience of traveling to Ground Zero immediately following the tragedy and offering to help in any way he could. I find myself experiencing a lot of mood swings around this event, from being thankful for all the first responders and the people in New York City for the way they rose and responded to what had been done. I also became depressed from my memories of seeing the carnage of that dastardly attack. I encourage you to turn around and look at those flags that are flying out there. They're a gorgeous sight today. Look at all the first responders that we have gathered around here. And like I mentioned before, all the other ones, which includes doctors, nurses, anybody that's involved in helping people. They were all down there in ground zero and they're all around here every time you need them. I believe that people who are first responders are programmed within to do whatever is needed whenever it is needed and without considering the possible consequences to themselves or their families. 
which is what I did on 9-11-2001. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our program for this evening. I thank you all for coming, and please take away from this tonight. Do not forget what happened 20 years ago. Thank you. On the morning of Sunday, September 12th, approximately 100 runners and walkers arrived at the Pollyann Trail near the Walwood Amphitheater for the start of the 25th running of Orion Township's Dragon Dash 5K. It was a warm, muggy morning as participants gathered at the starting line, and as the horn sounded, the race got off to a bit of a rocky start. participants are great. They're out on the course. They just left. They're having a great time. This is a wonderful course. This is my favorite course. Um, it's all poly and trail. Starts and ends here at Wildwood. It's all flat. It's um, in great shape. We haven't had any rain lately. We're in good shape. Yes, the mosquitoes are horrible this morning. And what are they competing for? What are the glory and the fame, of course. That's why they're out there running. No, it's all about getting outdoors with your family, uh, staying fit, staying healthy. Um, they, we do have some beautiful medals that we are passing out and some earbuds and some other assorted uh, Dragon Dash swag. On Friday, September 17th, management, staff, residents and family gathered together at Grace Senior Living to celebrate the facility's grand opening and one year anniversary with the ribbon cutting ceremony. We believe everyone should feel loved, listened to, and respected. So everything we do is to meet that very lofty mission. And that's what we're doing here. The property, located near the boundary of Orion and Oxford, was secured in July of 2018. Construction began on the facility in 2019, but the COVID-19 pandemic caused a five-month delay. The doors opened in September of 2020, but the official grand opening was postponed one year. The 54,000 square foot facility includes 64 rooms, 55 of which were occupied at the time of the grand opening. Well, we're grateful. Um, we have some great families that live with us and we are blessed to be able to care for them and share our life experiences together. Ella Palooza returned in 2021 with a tremendous turnout. Things kicked off at noon on Saturday, September 18th with an impressive lineup of bands and performers at the Walwood Amphitheater in Orion Township. Visitors also enjoyed food and beverages, games and activities for the kids, and there was even a cornhole tournament organized by Motor City Cornhole. So today um, we have a great line of bands. Yes, like some that are national, they're touring nationally, and someday we're hoping they're on the uh, up and coming hot band. So there's a lot of bands here and then lots of good free stuff for the kids that are sponsored by some of our awesome sponsors. Um, we are obviously, our billboard and presenting sponsor is a Pearden Group, is a local real estate agency around Lake Orion. Um, and we're very thankful for their sponsorship and all of our sponsors because without that, I mean, obviously none of this would happen. Um, but it's actually really a great, like, and today we finally got our first, like, probably the perfect day. It's been six years coming, but I think we finally got it. Um, but uh, it's a good family-friendly event, you know, bring out the kids. Usually during the day it's more family friendly, at night it gets apparently a little bit more fun because the beer tent's here. But um, So we've got beer, we got the Tipsy Pony doing some um, liquor drinks and some wine, so it's a super fun day for everybody. Bands that performed throughout the day included the Native Howl, Escaping Pavement, Trip and Dixie, One Ton Trolley and more. Many of the bands return every year to help support the cause. On the evening of Saturday, September 18th, dozens of participants gathered at the corner of Flint and Broadway Streets for the start of the 8th annual Zombie Walk. Some arrived early at Ed's Broadway Gift and Costume to have their makeup applied. Just after 8 p.m., the Zombie Walk was underway. I'm shot to pieces, Rooster. When we started it, it was going to be a birthday party, and my wife and I decided to uh, turn it into a Zombie Walk. And, um, you know, to raise money for the Christmas parade. So that's really how it started. We started with about 25 of our friends, and it's just grown ever since. The undead staggered along Broadway Street to Fork and Pint, where they enjoyed drinks and appetizers, 
and got strange looks from the other patrons. Afterwards, they made their way to 313 Pizza Bar and ended up at the American Legion. Those who chose to take part in the poker run received an envelope containing playing cards in each location. At the end of the night, the person with the best hand won a 50-50 raffle. Each year, the proceeds of the Zombie Walk benefits the Orion Area Parade Group, who organizes Lake Orion's Lighted Christmas Parade. On the afternoon of Sunday, October 10th, residents lined the streets of downtown Lake Orion for the 2021 Homecoming Parade. Leading the way was the Lake Orion Police Department's 1941 Ford police car, followed by students and faculty representing each of Lake Orion's six elementary schools, three middle schools, and of course, Lake Orion High School. The homecoming court made their way down Flint Street as announcer Lori Hogan introduced them to the crowd, including the seniors representing the class of 2022. And our senior representatives, first up we have Heidi Schuster and Christian Barsfeld. <laughs> Members of the class of 2022. Senior court is wearing green and our other reps are wearing gold. Next up, we have Paige Walker and Jackson Ben. Paige and Jackson have been running a strong social media campaign. They're hoping to win King and Queen on Friday night. Both members of the marching band. Next up, we have Melinda Brock and Clayton Piper. Melinda is the vice president of student leadership and Clay is a member of our swim team. <laughs> Melinda and Clay, members of the class of 2022. And our next court representative, a varsity cheerleader named Michaela Long. <laughs> Michaela is hoping to take home the crown on Friday night as she cheers the dragons to victory. Warm round of applause for senior court member, Michaela Long. Students representing various school groups and athletes from a wide variety of sports took part in the parade, including members of the Lake Orion Dragons varsity football team and their coaches. And bringing up the rear were members of Lake Orion leadership who organized the homecoming parade. as we're seconds away from starting the first powder puff game in two years. Then on the evening of Thursday, October 14th, Lake Orion High School seniors took on the juniors in the annual powder puff football game. The seniors had won four straight prior to the cancellation of the game in 2020. Could the class of 2022 keep the streak alive? With the juniors in white facing a third and 10 on their own 20, number 26, Chloe Wiegers scrambles in the pocket, rolls right, turns the corner, dodges a half dozen would-be tacklers, and somehow manages to emerge with flags intact, and she is gone. 80 yards into the end zone to put the juniors on the scoreboard first. The extra point was no good, and the score is 6-0, juniors. Following the touchdown, the seniors responded with a nice drive. On second and goal, number 40, Brooke Schoenberg takes the direct snap and finds the end zone to even up the score. The PAT was missed and things are knotted up at six. On the next drive, we're still in the first quarter. The juniors are looking at a second and 11 on their own 34. Number one, Whitney Acker takes the handoff, goes outside and runs 66 yards into the end zone to regain the lead. The extra point was good and the juniors are back on top, 13 to six with three and a half left in the first. Let's go to the second quarter. The juniors are facing a fourth and five on the seniors 43 yard line when number 86, Grace Sullivan takes the handoff and bolts up the middle, eluding tacklers and goes the distance. 43 yards into the end zone to extend the juniors lead. The PAT was missed, but the juniors are now up two scores in the first half, 19 to six. With the second quarter winding down, the seniors are threatening to score from the junior's six yard line. Quarterback Olivia Peplowski hands the ball off. It's a reverse. Number 46, Madeline Smith, comes to a complete stop before sidestepping the defender and running right to find the end zone. The extra point was good, and the seniors cut into the junior's lead. It's 19-13 at the half. 
Let's go to the third. The seniors are on the roll nine yard line. They pull another reverse. What the heck, it worked last time. Number 102, Gianna Rodriguez makes a nifty move and has a lane. One defender tugs at her flag to no avail. Another gets a grip, but the flag stays put. Rodriguez goes 91 yards into the end zone to tie things up. Unbelievable. Sarah Honescheid's extra point is good, and the seniors take the lead for the first time in the game, 2019. Later in the third, the juniors are forced to punt, and the seniors begin their drive inside the red zone. On the juniors' 14-yard line, Madeline Smith takes the handoff, goes right, changes direction, evades tacklers, and finds the end zone. The PAT was good, and the seniors take advantage of the momentum and extend their lead to eight points. Let's go to the fourth quarter. The seniors are at the juniors' 23-yard line, facing second and long. Number 27, Casey Lauer takes the snap, spins and rolls left. She streaks down the sideline for the score. The PAT was good, and that's all she wrote. The final score, 34-19 in favor of the seniors to keep the winning streak alive at five games. On a rainy Friday night, October 15th, the 2-5 and five Lake Orion Dragons hosted the 1-6 and six Seaholm Maples for the homecoming game. Let's get to the action. Early in the first, the Dragons are looking at second and seven on the Maples' 38-yard line when quarterback Kyler Carson hands off to Jack Wellman, who turns on the Jets and streaks down the sideline for the touchdown. The PAT was good, and the Dragons are on the board first, 7-0. Following a Maples punt, the Dragons begin a drive on the Maples 47. On the first play from scrimmage, Ray Payne takes the handoff, goes right, and nets a 30-yard gain before getting pushed out of bounds at the 17. On second and goal from the six, Carson hands off to Jack Wellman, who runs left and into the end zone untouched for a second touchdown of the game. The extra point was good, and the Dragons are up 14-0. Following another Maples punt, Lake Orion begins their drive on their own 28. On second and one at the Maples 30, Billy Roberson takes the handoff and goes the distance. The 30-yard touchdown run makes the score 21-0 with under two minutes left in the first quarter. With nine and a half left in the second quarter, the Dragons have a first and 10 on their own 25. Quarterback Kyler Carson fakes the handoff, keeps it, and just flat out outruns defenders, rushing for an impressive 75 yard touchdown. The extra point was good and the Dragons are up by four touchdowns. Following the score, both teams line up for the kickoff. The Maples mishandle the kick and the Dragons fall on to begin another drive in great field position. With 8.56 left in the half, the Dragons are facing a fourth and five. Instead of punting it away, Carson hands off to Wellman. He eludes one. Two, three tacklers, and whoop, jukes a fourth on his way to the end zone. The impressive run results in Wellman's third touchdown of the first half. Following the PAT, the Dragons are up 35 to nothing. At halftime, the homecoming court made its way onto the field. Returning to Dragon Stadium were 2019's King and Queen, Kate Barker and Joey Barron, to crown the 2021 King and Queen at the direction of Lori Hogan. Joey Barron placed the crown on the head of Jackson Bent. And Kate, will you put the crown on our 2021 homecoming queen, Miss Paige Walker? We caught up with the couple on the sideline during the fourth quarter of the game. Well, honest, well, a lot of my friends have been asking me all day, hey, do you know if you won yet? Hey, do you know if you won yet? And so I said, you just got to wait for the ceremony. You just got to wait for the ceremony. So all day, it's just been building up in my mind. And I was a little worried because I know all of the people who are on the court. And I was like, man, any one of these people, they're super popular, super nice. Any one of these people could have been voted. And I was just super happy that these people that were in high school wanted me to be their homecoming king and Paige to be their homecoming queen. Yes, definitely. Like, we don't know anything kind of before this starts. It's a lot of just like 
questioning and like just excitement that's building up and definitely everyone on the court was like really really eligible to be able to be a king or queen so it was really really nice that we were able to get picked and it was really exciting to hear our names and have Kate and stuff come over and say hi and give us the crowns. In the second half the Maples did manage to avoid the shutout with a late touchdown but the Dragons came away with a convincing homecoming win. The final 35-6 Lake Orion. On the evening of Wednesday, October 13th, Owen TV hosted its eighth annual Wellwood Film Festival at the GQT Oxford 7 Theater. Filmmakers of all ages were joined by family and friends to watch 12 films on the silver screen. Things kicked off the previous Thursday when teams were assigned to prop, location, and a line of dialogue that had to be concluded in the finished film. The filmmakers had five days to plan, shoot, and edit their films. Before the October 12th deadline, a team of judges scrutinized each film and awarded points for creativity, story, and technical achievement. The winners were announced following a screening of the films at the theater in Oxford, with first place netting a $175 cash prize. Second place earned $100, and third place took home $75. And named the top film of the 2021 Wildwood Film Festival with a score of 270 points was the film Just Roll With It, produced by Literally Nothing Productions, led by Charlie Fracker. Looks like things didn't go as planned. Regardless, you got the trophy? Yeah, we got it. It was really down to the wire, I gotta say. It, um, we put a lot of work into it, and coming down to it, we, really, we were really worried we weren't gonna get it done on time, but I think we did a good job for the amount of time we had and the amount of effort we put in. And how did you come up with the idea for this movie? Um, well, usually we just, you know, we think of things that we like to see, things that, uh, you know, we want to see in a film. I always wanted to do like a little heist movie or something like, the, uh, like that, so that's kind of how we got the idea for it. I always wanted to do something like that, yeah. On Friday, October 15th, more than 200 children and their parents arrived at the Orient Center for the popular Halloween Boo Bash event. Due to the rainy weather, everything was moved indoors where games and trick-or-treat stations occupied two floors of the Orient Center. So normally for Boobash, we have a lot of events outside our trick-or-treat street, carnival games. We have a hay wagon ride um, to a pumpkin patch and, um, and, and a few things inside. But with the weather this year, we were forced to move everything inside. So for today, we have about 10 vendors doing our trick-or-treat street. So, um, They'll all get you know, candy or goodies from each local vendor. Uh, we have Leslie Nature Science Center here. They have live bats, owls, and a tarantula. Um, and we also have different carnival games. Oakland County's here with their um, large uh, yard games. We have uh, different arts and crafts, and we have cider and donuts and hay wagon ride to a pumpkin patch. The Boobash was created in 2008 at Friendship Park, but moved to the newly completed Orion Center in 2012. In 2020, the Boo Bash was held at Friendship Park due to the pandemic, but returned to the Orient Center in 2021. When the rain lightened up, families boarded a hay wagon and took a trip to a makeshift pumpkin patch where the little ones could claim their very own pumpkin. On Wednesday, October 20th, Children's Park in downtown Lake Orion was filled to capacity for the Downtown Development Authority's Halloween extravaganza. Hundreds of kids and their parents trick-or-treated throughout the park while enjoying games, music, and entertainment. In the past, costumed children marched down Broadway Street into the village and trick-or-treated at the local businesses. In 2020, the COVID pandemic forced some major changes to the event, and once again, in 2021, the DDA had to adapt to even more changes. Last year, because of COVID, we had to have registration, and we were only allowed 100 people. Um, and then this year, uh, we weren't able to close down the streets, and so for safety reasons, all the businesses came down here for a great big party in the park. We had a magician, Baffling Bill, and right now we have hula hoop entertainers from Blue Crow, and I also have a light up juggler going around from the Striped Circus. And we have a DJ, we have fog machines as you can see, um, we have fog bubbles, and kids are trick-or-treating, playing games. It's been a great day. It's beautiful weather, and so many families have come out, and we're so happy. Despite being confined to Children's Park, numerous downtown businesses set up stations throughout the park to hand out candy and goodies. The response from the community exceeded the expectations of organizers, forcing the DDA to consider possibly expanding the event next year. 
so and we're definitely planning on expanding it maybe taking up that whole parking lot or next year doing in the streets we'll see where that takes us I am just thrilled I'm smiling ear to ear I, I couldn't ask for a better night and just to see so many happy children and families out again has just been thrilling from Children's Park this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News on Saturday, November 6th, the Orient Area Chamber of Commerce hosted the Love Local Expo in the banquet room of the Orient Center on Jocelyn Road. The free event was an opportunity for the public to meet with 33 vendors representing retail, nonprofits, and healthcare providers serving the Orient Area. It's kind of um, a combination of our Healthy Body, Healthy Mind Expo where we have our health-based vendors and then also a way to showcase a lot of our retails and nonprofits that we haven't had the opportunity to um, show off in the last two years because of everything that's been going on, right? So um, we found that there was a real desire in the community to have this expo and within our businesses and nonprofits. And so we thought we'd try something a little different this year and um, bring together kind of the greatest hits in Orion. And that's, um, that's where the Love Local Expo came out of. On Thursday, November 18th, the Lake Orion residents were invited to come out to Children's Park for the Downtown Development Authority's Sing and Stroll and Tree Lighting Ceremony. Things kicked off at 6 p.m. with the Cocoa Bar, Fire Pits, and colorful costume characters. Attendees were encouraged to take a horse-drawn carriage ride through the streets of the downtown area, and performers from Broadway Dance entertained the crowd as well as the Lake Orion High School Choir. At approximately 7 p.m., DDA Director Molly Lalone greeted the crowd and introduced Santa and Mrs. Claus, who began the countdown to light the Christmas tree in the gazebo and to light up the streets of downtown Lake Orion as well. We're going to start at 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, light them up! According to law enforcement officials, on Tuesday, November 30th, 15-year-old Oxford High School sophomore Ethan Crumbly exited a restroom with a 9mm pistol at 12.51 p.m. He immediately began firing shots at students. Approximately five minutes later, Oakland County deputies took Crumbly into custody. Soon afterwards, it was revealed that three students were killed and eight others injured, including a teacher. Those who died on the scene were 14-year-old Hannah St. Juliana, 17-year-old senior Madison Baldwin, and 16-year-old Tate Meir, who was a member of the varsity football team. The following day, it was announced that a fourth student, 17-year-old Justin Schilling, died from his injuries. Justin worked at Anita's Kitchen in downtown Lake Orion. Lake Orion Police Chief Harold Rossman and Lieutenant Todd Stanfield were among the first to arrive at the school. Chief Rossman described what he experienced that day. I was in my office and Lieutenant Stanfield was at his desk doing some paperwork and as he heard over the radio, our dispatch called out a possible shooting at the Oxford High School. Um, I didn't hear the first call. Um, Lieutenant Stanfield jumped out of his, from his desk and said, Chief, did you hear that? And I said, no, I missed it. And he said that he heard that there was a shooting, possible shooting at the Oxford High School. I was in the 200 block of the school where the rooms are 200 and the kids were coming out uh, we had them put their hands up for their safety our safety and the the the, the kids the 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 horror in their eyes the the terror um it's something i will never forget and i knew i had to do something and i just as a grandfather um a dad um I told the, the kids that you're okay. We're here, you're okay. And that, I seen some relief in some of their faces from the trauma they just went through. And that made me feel a little bit better that they had that sigh of relief that they're okay. Hours after the shooting, Governor Gretchen Whitmer joined Oakland County Under Sheriff Mike McCabe for a press briefing near Oxford High School, and even President Biden commented on the tragedy. Well, I, I just um, appreciate the quick response of all of our first responders. My heart goes out to the families. This is an unimaginable tragedy. 
Uh, I hope that we can all rise to the occasion and wrap our arms around the families, the affected children and school personnel, um, and this community. It is um, an unimaginable uh, tragedy and just, um, I just wanted to be here because I think this is a, an important moment for us to support one another, to support this community, and um, I want to thank our first responders again. I learned about a school shooting in Michigan. We learned, uh, well, as we learned the full details, my heart goes out to the families enduring the unimaginable grief of losing a loved one. On the evening of Thursday, December 2nd, the community was invited to come to Children's Park in downtown McOrion for a candlelit vigil to offer comfort and support to our neighbors to the north. Following the tragedy, a group of concerned Lake Orion parents quickly organized a vigil in Children's Park. So I'm just an Orion parent, and um, I thought it was important that we be together in a time like this. And especially with the students grieving, parents grieving, the close-knit togetherness of our communities are grieving. And so one of the most important things in a situation where you're in a hardship is to be with others. And so I wanted to bring the community together. On Friday evening, December 3rd, the streets of downtown Oxford were closed to traffic so the community could gather together to pay tribute to the victims and offer condolences to the family, students and members of the community affected by the tragic events of November 30th. Thousands of people of all ages filled the intersection of South Washington Street and Burdick as dignitaries spoke from a stage provided by Oakland County Parks. The candlelight vigil began with a four minute long moment of silence as church bells rang out in the distance. might say this isn't going to define us, but people will define us. We will be reduced to a statistic, but we are always Oxford, right? They are not going to define us because we will not be defined by the tragedy. We will be defined by the people that are standing next to us today. We are not Christians or Muslims or Jews or atheists or Hindus or Buddhists. We're not Republicans or Democrats. We're not progressives. We're not conservatives. We are Wildcats. Oxford. On the evening of Monday, December 6th, the Orion Township Board of Trustees held its first meeting in the brand new municipal complex located on Jocelyn Road near Scripps. Although there are some finishing touches that still need to happen, Orion Township staff moved into the building on November 29th and the Oakland County Sheriff's Office will be moving in soon. Every curveball that could have been thrown at us was thrown at us in this whole process and here we are. I mean, we are virtually on schedule we're under budget which is i mean in this going through a pandemic that's never we've never lived through at least in our lifetimes construction material costs tripled at times during this project um trades were you know couldn't get people to come to work and with work stoppages it was the fact that we're here is is literally uh, miraculous <laughs> On the morning of Saturday, December 11th, Orion Township hosted its annual breakfast with the Grinch event at the Orion Center. 120 kids and their family members were split up over two sessions and were able to enjoy a variety of activities. This is our Christmas event for the community. Um, we used to do a Santa event, but we wanted to do something different and a little unique, and so we thought that the Grinch would be great. So we have the Grinch here so they can get pictures with him. We have um, reindeer food they can make, which they make and sprinkle out on the lawn um, for, on Christmas Eve. Uh, we have an ornament craft and a coloring book and a countdown craft and breakfast as well. On Friday, December 17th, members of the Lake Orion Lions Club were joined by family and friends at the CERT building to begin sorting food and toys for families in need. As donations poured in, dozens of volunteers of all ages sorted food into various categories before packing them into boxes for families and seniors. Well, people look forward to this. Uh, people come out and they work hard. Um, you know, we, everybody knows the routine, so it's, it's not like they need a lot of direction. Um, we've, we've kind of developed a routine over the years, and everybody just kind of jumps in. It's kind of cool. Uh, it's, it's, it's community. On the evening of Friday, December 17th, the community gathered at Gall and Buen GMC in Orion Township, 
for the Holly Jolly Folly, the major fundraising event that helps make the Light at Christmas Parade possible. More than 350 attendees enjoyed a buffet dinner and entertainment and took part in a silent auction made up of items donated by local businesses and community groups. You know, it's a very special night it has been for us for a number of years, and it's really good to have it back. Um, we had to postpone it, as everybody knows, for a couple of weeks. And with all the sadness in the communities, tonight's a night where maybe we can have a, a normal, a regular night as much as possible. So we think this is the right thing to do, and, and we're happy to have the community here. 24 hours later, residents began lining the streets of downtown McWarrian for the lighted Christmas parade. Announcers John Cooper and Rock and Ronnie took the stage at Broadway and Front Street as four beams of light reflected on the clouds overhead to honor the Oxford High School students we lost. Leading the parade was Lake Orion Police Chief Harold Rossman in the department's vintage 1941 police car. His passenger was honored veteran Bob Watros, U.S. Navy veteran and park manager at the Orion Veterans Memorial. And named 2021 Citizens of the Year was local businessman and respected community member Matt Pfeiffer. The parade grand marshals were the Reard family made up of Robert, Donna, Christine, and Haley for their service to the community. Dozens of colorful floats, community groups, and businesses embraced this year's theme, Christmas in Toyland, and costume characters thrilled the little ones standing in the snow. I'm, I'm hoping with the community that it, it brings out the love that we have for everybody and that the, the community can come together and do something, not only knowing what had happened, but also having it, this is supposed to be a happy part of the year. So we're trying to do that and make it a little happier so that way people will have a better Christmas than what they could have had. And as always, Santa and Mrs. Claus guided their reindeer and sleigh through the streets of downtown Lake Orion to wish the community a Merry Christmas. On the morning of Sunday, December 19th, Approximately 150 runners and walkers gathered at the Orion Center to take part in Orion Township's Snow Dash. After checking in, participants lined up for the 9 a.m. start time. Numbers are way up this year. I'm not sure why. Um, I'm just going to guess that summer was kind of a downer and everybody's ready to be outside and be active. The first snow dash took place in 2017 with approximately 80 runners taking part. In 2020, organizers were forced to go virtual with the race due to the pandemic, and participants were encouraged to log their own times. The in-person race returned with 133 pre-registered participants with about a dozen more race day walk-ups. The course took runners and walkers onto a snow-covered poly -in trail. It's a true out and back, so start and finish is right here at the Orient Center. They go down to the trailhead, they go south on the Pollyann Trail, keep following it down until they have to turn around and come back. Conditions are beautiful. We had it groomed this morning because of the snow yesterday. It's a beautiful course. It's a beautiful day. Lake Orion residents certainly faced a lot of challenges over the past year, but the return of so many events helped the community enjoy some sense of normalcy despite COVID's continued impact on the world. And with that, we'll wrap up this special edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking news team, including the interns who have moved on to bigger and better things, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching and Happy New Year, Lake Orient.